In this video, we'll import a floor made with RailClone and recreate the materials. We'll then take this a little further to create a material instance that allows you to easily edit and tint variations and paint subtle variations using vertex colour. So first of all, let's stay organised. Create a new folder in Unreal's content browser. Import the textures you created when you set up the floor in 3ds Max to the content browser. Drag the floor FBX you just created into the content browser and the import options will open. You don't need to change much here but you can disable generate light map UVs since we created them manually in 3ds Max. If this is left enabled it will add another UV channel by repacking the UVs found on channel 0 which is channel 1 in Max. So click import. So with that done we need to tell Unreal which of our three existing UV channels to use for light mapping. To do this double click on the asset and open the editor. Find the light map coordinate index parameter and change the value to 2. Now you might wonder why 2 and not 3 here. Now it's because Unreal's light map channels start from 0 whereas Max's start from 1. To improve the quality of the shadows you can also increase the light map resolution if you like. So then we'll drag the floor into the scene. From the details panel set the location to 0 for all axes. When saving out of Max via FBX, the pivot was placed at the world's origin. Setting the location to zero will place the geometry exactly where it was originally. Okay, so before we perform a light bake, let's create the simplest of materials. Right click in the content browser and select Create Basic Asset Material. Give it a name and then double click to open the material editor. Drag the diffuse, roughness and normal textures from the content browser to the material editor. Once that's done, wire them to the relevant inputs of the shader and click save. Drag the material onto the floor to assign it to the static mesh. And then let's bake our light map to see how this looks. And we'll pause the video during light bakes. Ok so with that done, so far so good, the texture extraction is working perfectly. Now let's update the material to add those tint variations too. So go back into the material editor and then add a linear gradient map. We need to tell this map to use UV channel 1, which was 2 in max, remember? So hold down U while clicking on the editor to add a texture coordinate map. Change the coordinate index value to 1 and wire it to the linear gradient. Now in 3ds Max, you'll remember that we wired our gradient to a mix map. An equivalent in Unreal is called a linear interpolation or LERP. To add one, hold down L and click in the editor window and wire the gradient to the alpha input. We'll use this linear interpolation map to control the brightness of the diffuse map. So add a multiply by holding down M on the keyboard by clicking, wire the diffuse to the first input and the lerp to the second. Click apply to see how this looks on the floor. Not bad but the tint effect is very strong. You can change this by adjusting the values in the lerp node. Remember to click apply when you're done to see the changes. Ok so this is working well, but it's a little slow to keep clicking this update button. Instead we can convert these settings to parameters that can be adjusted in real time. And to do that you hold down 1 on the keyboard and click to add a constant. Wire it to the lerp's A input and then add another for the B input. Right click on the constant node and click convert to parameter. Make sure you give it a meaningful name and then do the same for the second constant. Click apply. Now if you adjust these parameters you can control and preview the tint variation of the floor in real time. So that's pretty much a straight recreation of the max material in Unreal. But let's use these same node types to add a few more parameters, starting with the ability to control the minimum and the maximum roughness. Wire a new lerp between the roughness map and the material. The roughness will be wired to the lerp's alpha input. Create two new constants wired to the new lerp's A and B inputs. And then convert them to parameters named something like roughness minimum and roughness max. You can now adjust the minimum and the maximum roughness of the boards as well as the tint variation very easily. 
So one of the advantages of having used real geometry in this scene is that you can easily set up a material that uses vertex colours to paint in variation exactly where you need it. In the next section we'll use this approach to control the brightness of the diffuse channel by painting with a brush. So wire a new linear interpolation node to the base colour with the existing multiply node in its B input. Create a new multiply node and wire it to the lerp node's first input. Wire the existing multiply node to its first input. Wire a constant and wire it to the multiply node's second input. Convert it to a parameter called where brightness. Add a vertex color node and wire it to the final lerp's alpha input. You can now select the floor and go into vertex paint mode. Painting with black will reveal the worn area. In this example I'm using the default colour settings and holding down shift while painting to use the erase colour which is black. You can do the same thing for the glossiness. Clone the existing roughness lerp and parameter nodes, rename the parameters wear roughness min and wear roughness max and then perhaps change the map to a different texture, a grunge texture. Now we can wire this new lerp map to the roughness input, wire the grunge roughness nodes to the first input, wire the floor roughness nodes to the second input, and wire the existing vertex colour map to the alpha. You now have separate parameters to control the roughness minimum and maximum for the worn and the non-worn areas. The ability to control tint variation, and the ability to adjust the brightness for the worn area. Using all of these you can get some really nice subtle variation and of course if you create a material instance from this asset you can control these settings easily without having to dig through the graph to find the parameters. So we've spent a little more time on material creation and other aspects of the process beyond rail clone techniques than we would normally. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did then please look out for more tutorials coming soon on how to export Forest Pack and Rail Clone to Unreal using Datasmith to maintain instancing.